My friends here in this part of uh, the city of Calgary, I got to say the momentum is exciting. It is inspiring. We know that we have got a, a tough fight in uh, in Calgary. So I will be spending an awful lot of time over this uh, the course of the next few days, making sure that we get every single last conservative vote out to the polls. Just days before the election in Alberta, the latest polling done for CBC News suggests Daniel Smith and the United Conservative Party are headed for victory. But the race remains close. 52% of Albertans polled say they would vote UCP, while 44% said they would vote NDP. Polling suggests the UCP could take home 51 seats, leaving the NDP with 36. Pollster and political commentator Janet Brown conducted that poll, and she joins me now. Janet, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. So the headlines I keep hearing out of Alberta is how close this race is going to be, but an eight-point gap and a 15-seat margin doesn't look super close to me. How do you assess the race? Well, you've got to put it into an Alberta context where we're used to having big victories from our governments. So actually, if there's only a 15-point differential between the two parties, it's it's going to be the most uh, the closest election in, uh, in in recent memory. So, uh, but the other thing is, is you talk about the top line numbers, an eight-point lead. What you really have, Alberta, I think, don't people realize is is how diverse it is uh, from a political point of view. So the polling indicates that it's going to be a wipeout for the NDP in Edmonton. They are on path to win every seat in the capital city. Outside of Calgary and Edmonton, it looks like it's going to be a, a wipeout for the UCP. They will pick up almost every seat outside of the two major cities. So then it's battleground Calgary. So this eight-point lead really comes down to a race that's too close to call in Calgary. So the, the, you, you've got to look at the regional numbers. The top line numbers in and of themselves don't tell the story. Okay, because that's interesting because there's going to be huge chunks of vote inefficiency in Edmonton for the NDP and vote inefficiency in rural Alberta for Daniel Smith and the UCP. But yet you still are projecting a 15-seat Alberta win. So uh, I, I assume then a lot of those are narrow wins in Calgary. Is that how you get there? Walk, walk me through that path. Yeah, well, we're calling it a close race, but there's 87 ridings in the provincial legislature and, you know, 65 of them are, are, are pretty certain. So there's really 20 that are up for grabs and most of those are in Calgary. And I, I think about Calgary as a bit of a barometer. The further north you live, the more likely you are to support the NDP. The further south you live, the more likely you are to support the UCP. So that's what I'm going to be looking for on election night, is how far up the map does the blue creep? How far down the map does the orange creep? Um, you know, that's that it's, it's the, you know, it's the the battle, and for those of you who are familiar with Calgary, it's like it's like Glenmore Trail, right? <laughs> it's, it's it's if the if the UCP can um, win seats um, north of Glenmore Trail, they will be unstoppable. If the NDP can win seats south of Glenmore Trail, um, you know, then they could just pull this off and and prove me and others wrong. Right, because your polling shows one in five voters surveyed are still undecided. So I mean. Could that lead to a, a late swing, maybe, that could change uh, your projections in a substantive way? Well, I know people like to make a lot about the undecided, but when you think about it, um, you know, we've now gotten to a time where if we get 60% voter turnout, we're going to consider that to be huge. So I often advise people, don't worry too much about the 20% of people who haven't made up their mind. There's another 20% of people who have an opinion, but may for one reason or another not vote. They may not be enthusiastic enough to vote. They may not think their vote matters. So what keeps me up at night is, is not the 20% who are undecided, the 20% who won't follow through and vote. One of the things that jumped out at me when I looked at this, it's not your top line numbers. When you get into the tabs and you look at the gender gap between men and women, and it's essentially disappeared uh, because, you know, the presumption you would have and what we've historically seen is that the New Democrats would do far better with female voters than the UCP would do. I mean, what do you make of that change and how do you think that could impact the outcome? I wouldn't characterize this data at all by saying the gender gap is gone. Um, there, there's statistically significant differences. Um, there's a 20-point gap, really, when it comes to gender. What we find, though, is that uh, there's a clear preference among men for the UCP. Among women, it's it's more divided uh, between uh, the UCP and the NDP. And and um, uh, so I think you know I think. Uh, NDP supporters saw this poll today and were disappointed to see that they weren't way out ahead 
um, with women, that it's, it's more tied with women. But again, you've got to look at the regional level. And uh, this tie among women is a bit of a washout between you know, um, rural Alberta, Edmonton, and Calgary. Right. Yes, and thank you for correcting me because I mischaracterized it. It was that the women vote is split evenly, and, and you would think that based on historical patterns, maybe, uh, that the NDP would have had an advantage. But are you surprised at these numbers? Because just a few months ago, it looked like, you know, Rachel Notley's comeback looked pretty secure, and here we are like 72 hours or so away. Uh, it, it looks like it's a goat path to victory for the NDP through uh, central Calgary. Well, let me go back four months. If you had asked me four months ago, I would have said absolutely the NDP is cruising to victory. Throughout the entire pandemic, the NDP was leading in the polls. Jason Kenney was very unpopular. Then the UCP elected Danielle Smith as their leader. She was very controversial. People were very doubtful about her leadership. Um, and, and so the fact that the UCP have been able to claw their way back from that position and now be in a position to, to win is, is, is really quite miraculous. On the other hand, though, I know people are sort of making a lot about this, this eight-point lead that I have overall. But like I said, you've got to look at the regional numbers. What I have here is a poll that says... It's a clear NDP victory in, in Edmonton, not a surprise. Clear UCP in uh, the uh, outside of the two major cities, and too close to calling Calgary. That's actually what we that's what we've been saying for the last six weeks. No, I, I think certainly after the last two Justin Trudeau victories federally, people can understand someone not winning the popular vote but winning the government, right? Because of the way vote efficiency goes. But I, I've got a map of Calgary in front of me. So for people looking at the races on Monday night when they're watching at home, is it Calgary Glenmore, Calgary Acadia, Calgary Elbow? Is that sort of the part of Calgary? Those are sort of the ridings that we should really be paying acute attention to? Yeah, there's another riding in the southeast, Calgary Pagan. Like I said, if you know anything about uh, Calgary, think about Glenmore Trail, and it's all the ridings that are south and north of Glenmore Trail that are going to be on my cheat sheet that I'm going to be paying attention to. Okay, Janet Brown, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it, and we'll talk to you again Monday. Thank you. And back to unpack the final campaign week are our two campaign insiders. Erica Baroudis is with the UCP campaign team and Cheryl Oates is with the NDP campaign team. Both are in Calgary because where else would you be 72 hours before the polls close? <laughs> All right, so, so Cheryl, the polling today has the UCP up, but there is this path in Calgary, it seems, where things can flip. So what key ridings are you watching to prove, to prove this polling wrong, as Jenna Brown says? Well, of course, we have our eyes on Calgary and a number of seats outside of the two major cities as well. And what I will say, first, I would like to play pundit because that's what I'm here for and say that what we really should be looking at in these polls is this swing in momentum that we've seen for the NDP in Calgary over the last couple of weeks. And even Janet Brown's poll shows support building for the NDP in that key battleground. Um, and then second, we're looking at the momentum on the ground. And certainly we are feeling that as we head out to uh, events around the city and outside of it uh, over this past week and into this weekend. Do, do you agree with uh, Cheryl with Janet's assessment that the further orange further south orange goes in Calgary the more likely a win but if you hit a blue wall you know sort of around that that, that was it the Glenmore Trail that you're in trouble? Yeah, I mean, I think it's been clear, you know, some of the traditional NDP ridings are central. Um, but, you know, we're going to work hard in every single riding. Um, I think that the biggest thing is that we don't look to pools. We look to what we're hearing at the doors. And I'll steal Cheryl's word because I think it's probably more appropriate with <laughs> us on the momentum um, that we're seeing people that wanted to get out and vote. They wanted to support us. Um, they want to get involved and help us on Election Day in some of these areas uh, across Calgary where we you know, want to put a lot of our manpower. Um, but, you know, we're going by the, the momentum and, and what we're hearing at the doors, and it's looking pretty positive for, for the UCP across Alberta, but as we talk about Calgary, definitely in Calgary. Okay, so Cheryl, just, just to put that question back to you, I mean, it, it, is it you've got to really punch in the southwest, southern Calgary, uh, or it's ball game? Is, is that where you see kind of the dividing line as people watch the results come in Monday night? Well, David, Erica and I do not agree on everything, but I will say just what Erica said, we are competitive. We're running full campaigns in every single seat in Calgary. There's no dividing lines. We are looking to win as much as possible. And the only poll that matters, as we know, <laughs> is the poll on Election Day. So we're aiming for that one. Right. So just, just Erica, the polling has been erratic, chaotic divergence throughout <laughs> this campaign? Like, you know, I'm not going to pretend to have acute insight into Alberta politics from my perch here in Ottawa. How would you assess where you see this race at this moment uh, on the Friday before the final weekend? 
I think what we can point to on every poll is we're kind of been operating in the margin of error and it's going to be close. So I think that that's a fair thing to say. Both camps need to get their voters out. Um, obviously, I'm guaranteeing that we're going to do a better job so that we can have more seats. Uh, but, you know, you are, again, it's why looking at polling can sometimes help with motivation and things like that. But you can't go off of a poll. You've got to feel what's at the doors. And we're feeling the positivity. Okay. All right. Let's uh, get your highlights uh, of the week. And Cheryl, let's start with you. Your pick for what you think was the NDP's best moment of this week of the campaign. Sure. Well, as I have this entire campaign, I've spent the my time on the bus with Rachel touring around Alberta. And over the past week, we have been spending some time in seats that many would have seen as unlikely NDP seats. And what we have seen is tremendous momentum. Seats like Sherwood Park, we had hundreds of people turn out for a rally there and then line up on the way out the door to get uh, autographs and selfies with Rachel. We had our supporters in Leduc literally overflow into the streets to cheer Rachel on. And then with very little notice, we had hundreds turn out in Red Deer to cheer us on as well. And I think probably our greatest show of support was in Battleground Calgary South, where we held a riding earlier this week. We had a thousand per people turn out and many who had never supported the NDP before. Okay, let's play a clip from that pick. You know, and I, I know there are more and more new faces at these events every day. And so just show of hands, who is here today at their first ever NDP rally? <laughs> All right, so Erica, what do you think when you see the NDP having a rally of that size in that key battleground of, of Calgary South? Well, I'm actually surprised Cheryl uh, picked rallies coming off of a UCP rally last night where I get to not say hundreds, but thousands of people came out. Uh, and I'll be conservative and say 1,400, but that's still in your thousands. And we saw a tremendous support in Battleground Calgary, I would add. So I think that, you know, it's, it's nice to see pockets of people coming out. I know that Leader Danielle Smith has been popping into many campaigns, sending off volunteers. Um, I'll be the first to say that I, I don't love the idea of rallies. They take people off the door. And if the NDP want to do that, you know, all week, uh, I'm more than happy to let our teams uh, get to those doors and get those voters to advance polls. I, I have to give you credit for a very impressive pivot. I asked you about an NDP rally and you immediately talked about the Conservative rally. But anyway, Erica, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give Cheryl a chance to pivot off of yours. Watch, watch your pick uh, uh, as the highlight of the week for the United Conservative Party. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't know why no. I thought it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> it's not going to be uh, me. No, so that, yeah. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, so my pick this week is actually from a couple hours ago when Danielle Smith did her last media availability and what is kind of the, the, the last um, pitch to Albertans. And I think this is important for two reasons. One, it shows kind of what we've talked about uh, every day of the campaign, which is what Albertans want to see in their government. So it shows what a government under the UCP, a re-elected UCP, will look like, which is focused on uh, the economy, affordability, and public safety. It also, I think, is important uh, to showcase that you know the tone of this media availability is also reflective of the campaign that the UCP has ran which has been very positive positive. and shocking that I'm gonna say this uh, in contrast to the NDP that has been you know mo primarily focused on being negative doing personal attacks and running away from their records so I think this is a good demonstration to not just Albertans but all of Canada on what a United Conservative Party government is gonna look like okay let's play a clip from that event we'll get Cheryl and the United Conservative Party has a strong state stable plan that all Albertans can rely on, one that will grow the economy, make life more affordable, make our streets safe and improve health care for all Albertans. And what does the NDP have? They've got nothing more than fear and negativity and misinformation. Okay, Cheryl, now you get your chance to pivot off of Erica's pick. What do you make of that choice? Well, I would say that this was just one more example of what the UCP has been desperate to do for this, for this entire campaign, which was pivot away the numerous videos, mistakes, and flip-flops from Daniel Smith's past. We have seen Daniel Smith campaign for her entire career on making people pay out of pop, pop out of pocket for basic health care services and they have been desperate to convince Albertans that they can trust her and what we're seeing what we're hearing from Albertans is that they have decided that enough is enough no more drama no more controversy it's time to have stable credible leadership and the only party that's running on mainstream Alberta values is the NDP okay so look we're going into the final weekend here there's 87 ridings up for grabs if my math is correct 26 of them in Calgary right that's the battleground so Erica what's the final weekend plan for Daniel Smith, as much as you can reveal. Is, is it hitting everything in Calgary, you know, for, in the final 48 hours or so? 
It's getting out to as many communities as Janet pointed out. We've actually uh, connected and got audiences to start supporting us that traditionally haven't. So we'll continue to motivate those folks getting out to our local campaigns. Um, you know, and I would say Cheryl answered the last question exactly how the NDP have campaigned. They just talk about negativity in Danielle Smith, where we're going to continue on for the next few days our positive uh, tone and getting out and being positive to Albertans about what their future holds. Okay, Cheryl, I'll let you rebut that and also give me your sense of what the final weekend plans are uh, for Rachel Notley. Sure, I'll just say that Erica spends a lot of time saying how positive she is and then immediately pivoting to the NDP. So I'm not sure that that statement holds up. But in terms of what the NDP will do in the last push here, we're going to spend a couple more days in Calgary talking to people about our forward offer to get them a family doctor, to make their life more affordable, and to build the economy of the future. We're going to spend a couple of days in Edmonton as uh, Rachel spends e-night in Edmonton where her seat is, talking to people about how we will work every single day to earn and keep their trust. And we're going to be talking about what we will do to immediately get to work, implementing their priorities should we have the privilege of forming government.